Hi friends, welcome back for Children's Chapel. Today is the third Sunday in Easter. And as you can see, we've added a third ribbon, a third white ribbon to our ribbon calendar. If you have a calendar at home, you can add another white Sunday. And if you have a calendar like this, you can choose to color Easter three white or just leave it white. All right, we are going to get started just like we always do. We're going to light our candle. If you have a candle at home with an adult's help, you can light the candle with me and say, why do we light the candle? To remind us that God is with us. Next, we are going to move into our time of prayer. And we're going to get our minds and bodies ready to talk to God. And so we're going to use the singing bowl to do that. We're going to put our hands in the air. We're going to listen with our ears. And when we can't hear the sound anymore, we're going to put our hand down. And then we will pray some prayers that we have on our hearts and minds. And if you have your prayer stone, you can hold that. Or if there's another special object that you would like to hold, you can hold that as well. And then, after we pray, we're going to do the Lord's Prayer together. So, hands up. All right, what prayers would you, or who, or what would you like to pray for today? I would like to pray for my friends and for my family and for all of you. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Next, we are going to sing our song with Jimmy. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the Alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Great singing, everybody. Next, we're going to move into our ritual of water. And so if you are following along at home, um, you'll need a cup of water, a bowl, and maybe something to dry your hands off with. We're going to pour the water into the bowl to remind us of our baptism. We are baptized with water. And at our baptism, God says God loves us. So, I invite you to remember that by touching the water and saying, God loves me. Right? And then whoever is with you should also touch the water and say, God loves me. And then I want you to look at one another and say, God loves you. It's, an, it's important to remember that we are loved by God, and it's important to remind others that they are loved by God. Next, we are going to listen to our story. Thomas and Jesus. The Bible has 66 different books inside of it. Four of the books tell us about Jesus' life. They are called the Gospels. This story can be found in John's Gospel. 
It is the evening on the same day that Mary Magdalene found the empty tomb. She has told Jesus' closest followers, or disciples, that Jesus is alive again. How might the disciples feel? Many of the disciples are gathered together in a house. The door is locked because they are afraid. They talk about what Mary has told them. Why might the disciples be afraid? Suddenly, Jesus appears in the room with them and says, Peace be with you. He shows them his hands. They can see the marks where the nails went through to hang him on the cross. It really is Jesus. How might the disciples feel now? Peace be with you, Jesus says again. I was sent by God to be in the world with you, so I will send you to be in the world. He breathes on them. I give you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be with you even when I am not. Jesus leaves them. This is Thomas. He is a follower of Jesus. He was not with the other disciples when Jesus appeared to them. When the disciples see Thomas, they are excited to tell him what has happened. Thomas has a hard time believing them. I won't believe it until I see the nail marks in his hands for myself, he tells them. One week later, the disciples are gathered together again. Thomas is with them this time. Jesus appears among them and says, Peace be with you. Jesus sees Thomas. He turns to him and asks, Would you like to see my hands? There is no need for doubt. You only have to believe. Will Thomas believe? Thomas replies, Jesus, my Lord. Jesus then speaks to all of them. You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Jesus will do many other amazing things with his disciples. These stories are told so that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The end. Okay, so in our story today, we see that Jesus has appeared to his disciples. So it is after the resurrection, after Jesus is alive again, and he appears in the room with the disciples. And of course, they're surprised and they're excited to see Jesus again. But there's one disciple that isn't with them, Thomas. And Thomas isn't going to believe the disciples until he sees Jesus for himself. And we see that Jesus appears again and shows Thomas that it's him. And he says to Thomas that to not doubt, but to believe. And so what do you think it means to believe? What do you think it means to doubt something? What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Why do we believe in Jesus? I hope you talk that over with the adult that you're with and think about what those questions might mean. All right, that is all the time that we have today. We are going to blow out our candle and say goodbye, but remember when we blow out the candle, that doesn't mean that God's no longer with us. It just means that our reminder isn't with us. God is always with us. Bye friends, see you next week.